who is happily married to a fellow entomologist, Dr. Zun Lit, with three kids, Catherine, Zomar, and Bamboo. Sisets is so much in love with bamboo and bamboo shoot. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, we have with us three of the most wonderful resource persons for us today. I would like to request my co-host to please join me. May we now invite on the dais the chair of the session, Averi Chua, and the three resource persons, Kamesh Salam, Dr. Nirmala Chongtam, and Merdalyn Cassie Leet, and please give them a big hand. The chair and the three resource persons, and may we request Sri Anurag Vajpai, IFS, Chief Conservator of Forest, Wildlife, and CEO Mitek to kindly felicitate the chair and the three resource persons of this final session. Shri Anurag Vajpai will now felicitate the chair of the session, Averi Chua. Averi Chua from Malaysia, the chair of the session. We have Kamesh Shalam, the first resource person of the session. Dr. Nirmala Chongtam who will be the second resource person of the session. And Madeline Cassie led the third resource person of today's final session. Thank you so much, Shri Anurag Vajpayee, for doing us the honors of felicitating. Uh, very good morning to all participants, fellow panel members. Uh, my name is Avery Chua. I will be chairing this uh, final session. And uh, I believe today we have all the heavyweight of the bamboo industry. So without further ado, I'd like to invite our first speaker, uh, Mr. Kalsim Salam. And Mr. Kalsim Salam is the previous president of World Bamboo Organization. He's a veteran of 25 years on the bamboo development. He had worked with the UNDP, United Nations Development Program, ADB, Asian Development Bank, GITS, German Development Agency, and he played multiple roles with the Indian government. Uh, he has worked with multiple countries, including Indonesia, Thailand, uh, Timor, Leicester, and most important of all, he's the founder of Bamboo Day. So let's welcome Mr. Kasim Palam on his uh, presentation. Hello. Uh, very good morning to all of you. And in fact, it's an opportunity again to have me in front of you. I'm thankful to Suzanne, Nirmala, WBO, and everyone for giving me a chance to speak today. I'm going to speak on bamboo. And, and, and what is the remedy for India? In the past few days, you must be hearing about the high potential of bamboo. Can do this, bamboo could do that. Bamboo is this. But I would like to talk some straight talks on this. It may be uncomfortable. It may not like some pictures I'll be showing here. But you have to bear it. It's a reality what I'm going to speak. 
and, and, and way forward, how do we go beyond this workshop? Because people come with expectations to bamboo. I know that. If I see, if I talk to people, I'll be going to get this, I, I may get this knowledge, so I may go, go and work in this thing. But I'll be very negative first, but I will also show the solution, like how we can go about it. It's such a lovely plan, it's a miracle plan. Yet it was a tree in India under the colonial rule. It became a grass now. Having even called grass, we still have problem. So, uh, how do you play this? We don't play rupiah. See, I want to tell you that bamboo is not a child's play. A small child in Mizoram helping the parents to make agarbati stick, which we import, a few million dollars of agarbati sticks are imported every day, every year in India to burn your home, to pray to the God. But we pray God by using bamboo from other countries. So I just want to tell you that this is not a child's play. You know, we think bamboo is very easy. I can set up a unit immediately and I can earn money. So, he's just helping the parents. He's making bamboo sticks. He's a five years old boy. I'm not promoting child labor, but I'm just giving an example, like how, it, how people think about bamboo. It's like the lapiru. You know. hmm. It's okay, you can put the slides. So, value chain management solution for India, that is my topic. I also like to contribute my you know, gratitude or my tribute to Mahatma Gandhi, who is the father of the nation. And on his 150th birthday celebration, I have been involved in talking to the youths of India on bamboo. So, this is one of my activities I have been doing this year to promote Gandhi's idol. In fact, one of his uh, Topic is very relevant to India today about he says that if every village is equipped to, to be uh, self-sustained, the whole problem of India will be solved. So exactly I see that bamboo can be one component and which is very similar to sustainable development goal, goal of UN. Now again another person who inspired me is my grandfather. When I started working bamboo almost 30 years back, people asked me, are, are you a forester? Are you an IFS officer? Are you a botanist? Are you an architect? No, I was inspired by this man. He is the first Manipuri textile engineer. He passed out in 1937. He worked with the British. And I have lived my part of my life before I left that Manipuri in 1976. I was with him only. He inspired me so much. He used to grow cotton. He used to rear, uh, rear you know, sheep to make wool, cotton, everything. And, but then I started thinking myself, can there be any other material which I can think that what my grandfather taught me? So this actually he inspired me a lot. This is in Raj Bhavan in 1952, the first president of India. When he came to the first, in Manipur became part of union, these are the products he was displaying to the India's president. So bamboo, as you know, like we are looking at processing. Another, uh, you know, which uh, comes to me is that last year I was awarded the most outstanding green activities, activities by Indian Federation of Green Energy. Why? I have been spearheading the moment to declare bamboo as a grass. And when it was declared, my name was announced in both the parliament. The prime mover was Kamal Salam. So I've been very happy that our prime minister announced bamboo as a grass. But I tell you, it's half done. They have announced only from the non-forest area. And like bamboo cannot be forest and non-forest. Bamboo is everywhere. Like today, I'm wearing this. We have attended so many conferences in the last so many years. So I want to tell you like where we go beyond this conference. But exactly, our foresters have mentioned about bamboo. Like, it's more than 100, 200 years back. Without bamboo, the Indians would be very poor and very poor indeed. And there is exactly, we are reinventing the wheel again. This was said in 1876. Uh, uh, yes, it was mentioned by the Britishers. When they came to India, they see that without bamboo, India would be very poor. So how, how value we, we have with this grass? Again, if I see the culture of Northeast, this is the world's bamboo, biggest bamboo dance, it was a Guinness Gold World Record. This dance is found in other South Asian countries, but world record was made in Mizoram. What I mean to say is part of the culture of the, the region. Then we, we call like bamboo as wa. The Myanmar is called wa. 
the coke borough calls wa the mighty is called wa the 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 borough people call wa and bengal is called ba there are a lot of similarity with the culture of northeast as a plan i will not go through it you have been listening on this for the so many days as a plan as a culture culturally we are very much associated with bamboo as a commerce like earlier we don't buy products we used to access we used to barter with whatever we take bamboo we take a basket we we bring the egg we take some some bamboo product we buy this, we take salt so bamboo was really barter and it's called bhat bazaar so the people go to the local village place with the whatever they produce and it was used the trading like this kind of agriculture products the tea baskets architecture you will see the the villages are interlinked with bamboo bridges bamboo housing bamboo furniture fencing which is again a very much part of our, our, our homes in northeast especially every homes has a bamboo fencing bamboo mat board baskets this angami basket you got a, this gentleman got a nestle award and its basket cost more than 2000 rupees from konoma in nagaland this is the, again uh, the mizo cap or mizo mizo weaving but i mean to say that this is the dimasa every tribe of northeast we have more than 200 tribes every tribe is on distinctive bamboo basketry weaving so much rich resources we have in terms of our cultural identity women and bamboo i don't need to mention you have seen the ima market you have seen imphal this is a village called patchoi where i took uh, our president yesterday that village entire village make bamboo baskets and these baskets are used for fishing uh, for cleaning the sand pulp for paper this is life in manipur you see bamboo suits bamboo baskets how bamboo comes in the early morning in imphal city to selma this is the life of imphal manipur how bamboo is so much associated with the life of manipur the characters of bamboo again i'll not go into details but this is very important the business for bamboo the money finance land labor and industry output the price of bamboo is constant everywhere if i go to tamenglong or if i go to imphal if i go to naugaon if i go to any part of northeast the price of bamboo is constant there is not much variation then what do we do it how do we evaluate it if manipur is so much land locked how can my products compete the market of national market it is impossible there are a lot of challenges here tripura has got the best artisan but they have a lot of challenges because they are land locked they have to go thousands of kilometers above bengal to reach delhi so these are the issues how do we face this challenge so bamboo as you see the traditional the industrial construction food medicine the sliver strips come we have divided into various parts the utilization from from the slivers bamboo mat board bamboo curtain board bamboo concrete board from strips we have from particle from composites so every part of bamboo can be look into so it's a grass okay but but everyone asks me about the bamboo flowering is going to flower and you know it's going to have a famine and every bamboo will die is a natural phenomenon is like is is like rice when you have the rice bamboo the the the, the straw pedi comes up is a biological circle so nothing to worry about bamboo flowering people have very wrong notion about bamboo flowering it comes with a disaster but very important for the indian viewers to see that we are talking about simpodal bamboo we are not talking on monopodal bamboo our friend mr chua is working on monopodal bamboo in china that grows single grown like coconut we are working with with simpodal bamboo this is the crux of the problem here because it is very hard very difficult to manage the mature bamboos are always in the middle management is very difficult here this is the crux of the problem and most of the problem in india starts with our quality of bamboo if i tell you the story like what happened in bamboo a paper mill started in the early 70s in jogihopa is closed down they were getting bamboo all from bihar west bengal assam by the royal family of darbanga but they have closed why it is not bamboo was not available bamboo was plenty in the last two years three more paper mills shut down the hindustan paper mill jagi road tuli and 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 and, and nagaon and thousands of families are without salary for the last two years they are really starving there are a lot of noise going on because the paper mills are shut down these paper mills are 100% fitted on bamboo no way in the world that so much bamboo is used for paper mill by why it was shut down because i will what about mismanagement they could not give proper money to the farmers they could not give the proper uh, you know plantation at the end 
it was not viable, they have to shut down. So these are the, and what has happened in Manipur? They were chipping me in Manipur and Meghalaya. Who is was supplying bamboo to these paper mills? Even they are shut down. See the effect. Now we are traveling here, you see bamboo everywhere, bamboo everywhere, but we are not able to utilize. Pulping was the biggest industry in the region. Then another story, you will be surprised to know that in the mid-90s, five entrepreneurs went to Taiwan, sponsored by government of India. They came back so happy, you would not know, they said, we have a buyback for, two, for chopstick. They were given money by the government of India. On loan, the machines came. When they started making chopstick, they signed an agreement for 40 paisa per chopstick. Their production came one rupee. They never thought the machines they bought was for mozo bamboo, not for symbol. Right? So when you put the bamboo in the, in the machine, it says that it will produce 80 kilos per hour. It produced only 40 kilos per hour. So your entire buyback fell down. It doesn't work. The machines are seized, still lying in the go down. Custom duties are not paid. But this is a history now. So that was a big lesson to the people of the region that you cannot work. Another thing. A bamboo flooring unit based in West Bengal, in Falta, is an ex export zone. Put up a bamboo flooring unit. He made up his mind, I'll ship to Mizoram, because Mizoram is full of bamboo. The unit has not opened till today. Why? Because he never realized that Mizoram is only mooly bamboo, the thin wall. The bamboo flooring were made from the thick wall. Every has shown a study of a new technology. But 20 years back, this technology was not available. Right? So what happened? Investment of a few million dollars are still lying idle. This is a big monumental history I'm telling you. The bamboo CFCs I'll be showing you. There was national mission on bamboo application of the TIFAC. The bamboo med industries. The bamboo projects of UNDP. Then also bamboo units in Tripura, Assam. Bamboo technology park in Assam. Still lying sir. It's very sad to say the word. It's lying sir. We have no utilized. National Bamboo Mission Part 1, Part 2, we are going Part 2 now. Part 1 is the disaster. We have shown that we have grown bamboo. Where is the bamboo grown? The milestones again, where we missed the bus. In Northeast, in 1996, there was a ban on felling of timber. That was the time when people said, okay, timber is closed down, we shift to bamboo. It was not taken place. 5,000 plywood mills were shut down overnight in Northeast. It was an earthquake. There was a PIL filed, filed by one Damodaran from Kerala, not from Northeast, to Supreme Court. The timber felling should be banned. Supreme Court banned it, and all the ply mill units shut down overnight, and all the you know saw mills shut down overnight. Lakhs of of uh, you know the saw mills shut down. Millions of people got jobless overnight. That was the time when we could have changed to bamboo. Then we talk about bamboo flowering. Bamboo flowering is coming. Bamboo flowering is coming. Millions of bamboo is going to flower. Bamboo flooring came, it went back, it went. Nothing happened. Two million bamboos were supposed to be harvested during the bamboo flooring. Nothing happened. We are importing bamboo sticks. No, IK has come to India. IK has been mentioning every day, we want to buy chopstick, we want to buy board, we want to buy this. They are not buying anything. They are importing from China and Vietnam. It is again a big cruel job. The policy support. Still now, bamboo is looked by a mission. But in India, you, when you buy a cigarette, it is written that tobacco smoke is injurious. But you have a tobacco board to promote tobacco. But there is no board to promote bamboo. It's an irony today. We are promoting cancer. There is a body called Indian Tobacco Board with big hoarding that tobacco should be promoted. But why not for bamboo? So these are the missing links. See, this is the paper mill. They are shut down. Such a huge investment. This is a monumental disaster in Northeast. Anyway, I'll come back to the... Then when we talk about bamboo, we said we have got 100 species, 800 species, or whatever species we have. Let's stick to commercial species. Let's go only which are, uh, you know, which we can produce item, which is good for weaving, which is good for basketry, which is good for food, which is good for slicing. We have to zero down to these species. The farmers should be told, you grow these species, jati, you grow jati. This is good for weaving, this is good for that. Otherwise, you cannot grow all the bamboo. The machines cannot take all the bamboo. China works only one bamboo called monopotil. This is unmanaged clump. You have to manage your bamboo. This is a managed clump. If you manage your clump, as I said, simple is difficult. 
This picture is from Timor, not from India. I found this gentleman doing a very good harvesting, so it is from Timor Leste. Now, this is how we transport bamboo. This is from the hills of Northeast. Bamboo is just parked on the roadside. They are young as well as three months. They are young as, as well as two months because they are just one by the weight by the paper mill. This is how bamboo is harvested. See, again here, there is bamboo trading going on today in the Assam Bengal border. Bamboo comes from all the villages. They have been graded and they goes to all over India. Any nook and part of India, bamboo goes from Assam. And this is how bamboo has been transported. Bigger trucks, smaller trucks, and this is a daily trade and by railways also. Again in villages, everybody comes and brings the bamboo on the, on the front of the house. The smaller pieces goes in the smaller vehicle and it, is bigger, it goes in the bigger vehicle. Here again in the hillside, by river, we have a lot of rivers. Bamboos are just thrown in the river and somebody picks up. You'll be surprised, I think we have friends from Bangladesh. There's a bang, the paper mill in Bangladesh or Karna Fully paper mill. 100% depends on bamboo from northeast. How? We put it in the river, the other side receives. It's very easy. This is how bamboo goes. Then, the planting material. See, again, I take this picture, which I just took from Taiwan very, uh, uh, 10 days back. How both tea and bamboos are going side by side. In Northeast, we are good for tea. We know tea. Assam tea is the best tea. And there's a good yield of tea. How? How? They manage the tea garden. They put water sprinkler. They put, they put manure. Same thing, they look after bamboo. But here in Northeast, if you can look after tea, why can't you look after bamboo? Until unless you have the management practice, bamboo will never grow well. It will always be a wild bamboo. Now, another problem of bamboo, as we all see this picture, whenever you see any bamboo product, the first question is that how long is going to survive? If you have the best basket, if you have the best furniture, if you ask for the best price, the customer is going to ask the first question, what is the survival rate? There is the biggest drawback of bamboo today. If you say 10,000, he'll say, I'll pay 5,000. If you say 5,000, I'll pay you 2,000. If you say 1,000, they'll say, I'll pay you 200 rupees. Why? Because of these qualities. Bamboo has got starch content. Because of starch contents, it is prone to termite and insect. Right? So, because of that, bamboo is, has to be treated. This is how you see when the bamboo becomes damaged. Because of these qualities, people does not want to pay at all. But how do you guarantee? You treat them. By treating, you can do that, but you need still a certification. There are many stories from India, even from Thailand. Products went to Europe. They were rejected in the mid-seas because insects started coming out. The containers were offloaded in the mid-seas. It never reached the destination. So we had a lot of stories as, as well like this. Now treatment and grading, how? The treatment pressure train by, by, by uh, the drying, all those things is required. Then what do you do next? You do the grading, A size, B size, C size. This is mainly for construction. The best price, you can, you can also grade the bamboo or the best price. We need to do the grading. Until unless we do grading, you will not get a good price. Now, this is a picture I took in Goa. When I landed in Goa, my friends called me, hey, Mr. Salam, come and see, there's a bamboo cottage, but uh, they are not op able to open because they're powdering. So when I went and I saw that entire bamboo cottage, no one even stayed fresh, but not even two months old, it started powdering. Then they to told me, what is the solution? They said, you have to burn it. There's no solution. But what happened with the investor? He was very disappointed. He was misguided. I used the bamboo, but those bamboos are not treated. So these are the real stories. What happens when you, when you buy uh, immature bamboo? And what will happen next? Bamboo has a bad name. People doesn't want to use bamboo anymore. Now, again, if you see the traditional knowledge, this is Patna in Bihar. All the rickshaw drivers are using bamboo for their cover. These are strong bamboo. These are all traditional wisdom. They have been using this for 100 years. There is no termite. There is no insect. It is just very strong. So we also need to use our traditional wisdom. What is there? Our forefathers were using to, to treat bamboo and all. Those are also required. Then again, we have got plenty of bamboo stocks in Nagaland. They are being used to make charcoal. Now, this is again the most interesting part. We have seen machines lying here. Once they go to the villages or to the community, this is what you see. Machines are lying there, no planning. Right? See the power connection. 
Most of the medicines are non-functional to death. Medicines are not suitable for any product line. Government is giving medicines, I'll take the medicines, I'll go home. Lego spare parts. One part broken, part doesn't come back. You are finished. Most of the CFC put up medicines in India in educated place. Bamboo is long, but the rooms are so small, even bamboo cannot move. See, medicines are not used. This is an Anastra Pradesh. They use it in, 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 in the storeroom. Costly machines. See the conditional machines. The generator lying like this. So what do you think of our machines? Do you think is it worth? Or is it that we are not able to adapt them? Either we don't have the skill to run these machines. If I give a Mercedes car to you, and if you can run them, drive the Mercedes cars, you cannot say the Mercedes is bad. It is similar here. We have been given tools and machines which are not required to us, which is a common scheme. You have to design your own requirement. Then only we can say the machines can be used. See, this is the machine in, in, from China in Guwahati. In a go down. When I went there, I saw at least two, two dozens of machines lying like this. They are brand new machines. They cannot operate because they require two tons of bamboo every day to process. And after two tons of bamboo, the wastage is 1.5 ton. They are getting yield of only 0.5 tons from these machines. The owner was smart enough. Mr. Salam, I am just dumping here and I am making a big warehouse and I am earning good money out of it. But what happened to this investment? Is it not a bad example? Whom do you blame to? You blame the bamboo, you blame the people, you blame the machine. There is something wrong. This is Mizoram. It came 20 years back. Borke machines. Not even used once. Sorry to say, I'm not uh, you know, humiliating anyone, but these are the real pictures. See, it's a monumental piece. Costly machines, not being used. Because in Mizoram, you don't have a thin wall bamboo. You have thick wall bamboo. Then who did the planning that I should set up an industry in, in Mizoram? And you forget it. Let's come back. We have to have an innovative approach, a market-driven approach, species-specific approach, sector-specific and technique-based approach. So we can explore various products from bamboo, the understanding the cluster, the species we have to identify, the plantation we need to identify, and also creating new designs, very important. The same thing, again, innovative, these are innovative design. With small bamboo, we can get better price. These are from NID Bangalore. Then folding. Northeast, maximum problem we have from here is transportation. But if you can fold this, this was done under, under the UN, UN unit of project earlier in CBTC in Nagaland. So these are the uh, we can fold the furniture. Then species, the solid bamboo, we can make this kind of product. Then toys, then the file covers we are getting here, but we should get more colorful, more better ones like this. Then appropriate utilization of bamboo. Angamali in Kerala, they were very good for weaving. So they have diversified from weaving to various products. In Trivandam, Katlamara, another example done by MP Ranjan in, in uh, an NID team. Another cluster is in Barpeta, here in Assam, Barpeta Road. They are making bamboo straw. Not making, they are collecting this bamboo, they are processing to make into bamboo straw. This is the community who is doing there. And they are supplying all over India. Very innovative. But what I saw them, they said, we are having a lot of wastes. That cluster is also doing a lot of bamboo, small you know, uh, artifacts. And what I like was that they have this uh, small treatment tank in every house. Though they couldn't make the tank, but they dug the soil and they put the tarpaulin and they are treating there. So these are good examples. The furniture is very nice. Now what we need in bamboo is branding. We need to brand bamboo, right? If you brand bamboo, we can get better price. Packaging is required. We don't pack. We just put in a polythene bag and give. If you do pack packaging, we may get better price. Again, costing is very important. So again, we should have the production system in place of bamboo, the furnitures. Then appropriate technology, as I said. The treatment and finishing is very important for bamboo. Then knockdown, as I mentioned earlier. See, this was done by UNDP and NID, they went to China, they came back with some bamboo board and we created these bamboo furnitures, but we cannot implement them because we could not make the boards in India. This again, 20 years back. 
Awareness is very important for bamboo. Encourage cluster members and entrepreneurs. The hangers, small products, youth market, mannequins, book racks, the furnitures, again, the beds, the woven hand tools, power tools. Again, in value chain of bamboo suits, this is how we are still working like bamboo suit like this. Some packaging unit has come, but we bring the raw bamboo, we cut in the, there in the, in the market, and we sell there, or made a fermented one. In Nagaland, they are packing into uh, bigger jars, and they are selling to Delhi market, the bamboo suit. Then another big market is the bamboo mat uh, cluster. This is in, in uh, Thule, in Nagaland, uh, they are making this bamboo. These are the how every day thousands of bamboo mats are collected, and it goes to the uh, for the ply units or for the for, for other you know for go downs and all. But again, it's very tricky. They don't want the skin; they don't want inner portion, and they want a specific size. So if people doesn't leave that size, and there's a big drawback. So people are not risking very much to make these mats. So bamboo mats in, in, in Thule, they sell around 120 rupees per mat. And what do you make from that bamboo mat board, bamboo roofing sheet? Again, Mizoram Agrabati cluster. Now you see, we are importing os. We are importing these sticks, Robati. These are all coming from Vietnam. Entire lots is coming from Vietnam. Even it comes in this roll form, only perfuming is done in India. But we try to open one in Assam. This is a unit in Assam. Uh, ITC chairman, uh, we call them, and this unit is running in Assam. Mangaldi, we started doing in Assam. Then this is a bamboo lumber unit in Assam, again. Their furniture are also, I see display here. The bamboo trees, bamboo stream oven board. And this is the waste. This is the waste, dust. They, they have compacted for burning it. These are furnitures. Now, I would like to show a value chain which I did in Punjab recently, in Talwara. I have a student from NID who has worked with me. There is the bamboo market. We show the bamboo market, how they sell the products, how they brand it. And these are a designed bamboo which is selling a better price. They are mainly strictest bamboo. So with this strictest bamboo, again, they do the treatment there. You see, the traditional treatment. They do the straightening, use the firing, and they sell it these packages. These are mainly used for scaffolding and for stairs. So this is the market in Talwara, in Hosharpur or Punjab. So what we did was that from the forest department, we took over a CFC to make a furniture unit. We trained the local boys there. So out of that, again, this uh, student from NID, he further designed this kind of products. So these are the products he designed from that strictus. So these are real good products. Now, if I have to see the existing bamboo chain, we have the bamboo farmers, bamboo collector, bamboo artisan, the wholesale. So this is how the traditional bamboo value chain goes. There are a lot of players here in the, in the value chain. So in raw bamboo, we have a lot of problems in the raw bamboo. We have layers of bamboo, middlemen. The first who cuts, then the first storage, second storage, transportation. This is, a, this is the value chain of bamboo. Then furniture value chain. So I have mapped each and every value chain. I don't have much time to discuss in detail, but we can discuss later on. But see the profit margin. Who takes the maximum margin? The cultivator, the collector, the local trader, big, the wholesaler takes the biggest margin in the whole value chain of bamboo. So this is very important to see where the profit goes. Who is making, making the maximum benefit? Again, again here, with, uh, a bioethanol plant is coming in Assam. For PWC, I designed their bamboo value chain for them. This is what I designed. And now the project is under implementation to make ethanol from bamboo by NRL. I was the consulting expert for, on bamboo. This is a bamboo supply from farmers. This is a bamboo procurement from where to procure, how to process, what is the transportation, and this is the ethanol formation. So this project is true. I'm happy to say it's 11,000 crore project, the world's first bioethanol plant coming in Assam. My contribution was to make this value chain and give the roadmap for bamboo. So how do we do? We cut the bamboo, collect it, size it, but we want to make it more mechanized, like primary processing, bamboo processing, that kind of thing. Again, this is in Timor Leste. I was surprised to see the villagers just flattening the bamboo is easy to, easy to carry. If you take round bamboo, it takes a lot of space. So they make it flattened to carry. Now, coming back to the, the model which I would like to share with you, the Thanwa model in, in, in Vietnam. See bamboo, rice, sugar cane, all grow side by side. And this is how similar like Northeast, there's similar bamboo like simple bamboo. 
But what is more important, you see here, these are the bamboo waste pulp going to the paper mill. These are the bamboo chopsticks. And these are primary processing. This is right in the jungle. And with a small facilities here. Then again, it is a home base unit. The furniture, the primary processing. Here, this bamboo goes to the factory in this portion, in this cut portion. The whole bamboo doesn't go. See, that they make chopstick and, and, to, and also agarbati stick for Indian market. They are trying, we are able to import in huge quantity from these places. This is right in the jungle in Thanwa. Now, what I what likes is that all this bamboo waste, they put in a caustic soda, they pulverize it, and they carry it to the factory to make pulp or whatever paper it is. So every primary processing is done in the village level. In India, we put bamboo to the, to the factory. Then what I saw, all the waste here, the, all the bamboo come. So when I went to the next building, this lady, she's the entrepreneur. And she's making this charcoal and she's exporting to Japan. So, and here she's buying at around one rupee per kg, this. But if I buy bamboo, the whole bamboo, the bamboo will be very costly. So she's buying, collecting all the waste from all the village, all the units, and she has a charcoal unit. A very successful model. I have seen the charcoal units being shut down in India because cost is very high. The one village, one product model in Thailand, very successful. In China, it's different. I can go to market, I can buy these different colors of bamboo. I can start weaving immediately after I buy. They are more mechanized than us. But again, in the Thanwa model, I saw the farmers, collectors, traders, pre-processing workshop, finishing factories. This is how it works. So what does it mean? Growing has one section. The primary processing comes in micro, small, and finishing. They have divided the work lot. So if the units here can also work in this level, I think it is a win-win for all. We have to work in this level. If we really have to manage bamboo and see that potential of bamboo is you know, taken care. So what is the benchmarking? The benchmarking is that in Indian model, our waste is 50 to 70 percent. But in China or in Vietnam, it is 5 to 10 percent. So why can't we come to this model? Why can't we come to this model? And to do this, we need to work together. Agarbati unit, bamboo flooring unit, bamboo processor, we need to work together if we have to really do the value chain. The subsector, this is from Professor Joas, very famous. Uh, so every part of bamboo can be used. Again, in, in India, we have the bamboo building courts. So the, some courts are there, and we need to have more building courts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I started this bamboo. To, uh, I'm happy to see a bamboo toilet here, which I started. Then the communities in Kajiranga. Then we did a lot of training in Manipur earlier. This is in Bhutan. Now, the recent project which I did in, uh, with Yorkstam in Anochal Pradesh, I'll just go through this. We made a gazebo there. This is a treatment. So this is the end product. Yeah, this is Namsai. The team. Then uh, have a, if you have a mobile, you can just download this app, mobile app, which was launched in India, in in, uh, in 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 Beijing, in Bhutan. So this is the details of Bamtech, which I'm trying to propose bamboo for Manipur. Uh, we have planned to start a bamboo-based bio CNG gas. This is the first agro gas. Is the first bio CNG from bamboo in the world. They have been patented. So I took our Minister, then Mr. Baipei, we had a visit to Pune. Uh, we are in the process of making the DPR. So this plan is coming in Manipur. And to be very frank, Manipur has its own problem of road blockade and many issues. If this comes up, a lot of bamboo can be consumed here in Manipur itself to make into biogas. Then we are also launching this bamboo straws and toothbrush. And my book on bamboo green gold, the value chain, which is be launched in, uh, in May this year. So World Bamboo Day, which is a collective effort of WBO. And this year we plan to do it in Bhutan in Thimpu. So I would like to welcome you all uh, to the World Bamboo Day event in, in Bhutan. Thank you very much. And we are still sitting on a golden egg. We are still sitting on a golden egg. Thank you.
Hello and uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Kamish, for highlighting the real state of affairs in the Northeast. Uh, you have been a member of uh, the National Bamboo Mission, and you are still one, and I hope that even if the first one failed, yeah, as you said, the second one, one will be more successful than before. Uh, so uh, I'm going to talk about uh, bamboo, but before that I would like to just uh, highlight the power of bamboo. Um, I, I have grown up in Manipur among bamboos and I have been very intricately associated. I remember that when I was a child, uh, there were huge clumps in the backyard and we, uh, we as children would go to collect small eggs which birds had laid. The uh, scientific name, I don't know of the bird, but in um, Manipur it is known as Urenkontho, and we used to collect them, but now all the bamboo has, uh, it has gone, we don't have, and so we don't see the uh, birds also. So it's, uh, bamboo has, is important and will always be uh, very important to us. Um, I started my journey, I'm not uh, a real, let's say, uh, for my PhD, I worked on, I, I am a geneticist by my research, then I did my uh, postdoc in molecular biology and genetic engineering. So I don't really, I didn't have a real base of bamboo, but when I came to Punjab University, um, from this small uh, state of seven sisters, I went there, Kurukshetra University, and then I went to Punjab University. This is where my bamboo journey started. I joined, and the chairperson was a department of working on bamboo. And there, from there, the power of bamboo was so strong because I had my roots with bamboo, and then I started my work. So now it's 16 years uh, I have worked with uh, bamboo nutrition. And uh, Northeast India, where, the, uh, where my home place is, uh, it is uh, a real biodiversity-rich re region of the world. And because it is a transition zone between Indian, Indo-Malayan, and Indo-Chinese biographic regions, and uh, there, are, there is a very huge, diverse biodata with a high level of endemism. It has a has a very large uh, total bamboo resources, but in one sense it is most neg neglected, like we will come to know in which part I'm going to focus, I, I will not focus on the whole bamboo, but I will focus more on the food and health benefits because that is my area of research. Sorry. Uh, bamboo is uh, known as Kalpa Vrishka. I remember I read one of uh, Kame's article where, uh, where it was mentioned. Kalpa Vrishka is uh, it's a plant which, uh, uh, which was worshipped and it, it, it used to supply all the needs of uh, everyone. So building material or agriculture implements, entertainment, food and medicine. And so it fulfills numerous needs of the inhabitant, just we have heard, we have from every part of the plant of bamboo is, uh, is usable, you can use it. And this is the area of uh, northeast, how it is spread, 53 species, this is not new. So the largest cover is in Arunachal Pradesh, and second is in Manipur. And we know about the multifarious uses, uh, ah, sorry. It's going too fast. Okay, so, sorry, it's not really. Okay, okay. So it is used in so many things, uh, beverages, toiletries, cosmetic and food, ecology and environment, which is also a very important part. Uh, but if you take everything, 
bamboo as a food in medicine when we talk think about bamboo we think about other things but we do not really think it as a food as a medicine globally as well except of course there are countries but in uh, but as a medicine also it is the most neglected part um, why we are concentrating on food because food assurance is the first uh, important for us and uh, we are faced with malnutrition poor health and hidden hunger and FAO, it has estimated that there are 800 million people who suffer from food and nutrition insecurity, particularly in the unprivileged population groups. And they, uh, there are, some are cr chronically hungry and 2 billion people, they are affected by hidden hunger. Hidden hunger means uh, when there are micronutrients, when you suffer from micronutrient deficiencies, that is hidden hunger. And there are uh, the sustainable developmental goals. They have, they have emphasized on eradicating, eradicating hunger. And uh, so calorie deficiencies, micro, micronutrient deficiencies is one of a very strong emphasis paid in the sustainable developmental goals. They, came out, they have come out with a So bamboo covers uh, five sustainable goals, uh, developmental goals, and, and hunger achieve food security, decent work and economic growth, and making cities, human settlements in safe and resilient. So out of 200,000 known plants, only 3,000 are used as food. Uh, and uh, the, these four plants, they are, these, are cro these are crops which are mostly utilized globally. And because there is high intensity agriculture, um, these crops have become more vulnerable to biotic and abiotic stress. Because when we breed plants, when we all, always select from some characters, we are losing genes from the huge gene pool. So the genes become homozygous, but heterogeneity is required if you want a plant to be more adaptive. Or, or you want to be more sustainable. So the gene pool is being lost of high agriculture intensity. So that is why uh, we are facing problems in, in many ways. And modern agriculture system, as it, cross, it uh, is at the cross, crossroads, because there is stagnancy in productivity. We don't have really good genes now because we are, we are thinking about yield, but we are losing the wild genes, which be, uh, which can make the plants, uh, plants more stable. So declining soil fertility is one. Groundwater pollution, high input cost. Now labor is very costly. And uh, so then the, there is increase in the food prices. And so there, the whole community, world community, they are, they are, we are trying to struggle. There are, of course, developed countries who have a lot of food, but there are many countries where the food is very less. And so uh, there, how to handle this, the socioeconomic dynamics, that is one big problem. And we need to focus on underutilized and neglected crops. That is what the International Plant Genetic Resources Institute, based in Rome, they are emphasizing on. Let us look for plants, which I remember that we used to have eat many types of vegetables when you are young, but now they are being replaced. And these underutilized and neglected crops, they are high in nutrition, high ill health promoting, uh, health promoting uh, factors and we need to bring them back for so IPCRI they are telling all the continents that you go and bring back those crops you have neglected and so that we will not only depend on some specific crops and in this bamboo is one of them because of its high nutrition and because of the health benefits it con uh, confirms on on the consum consumer and uh, this, I think, mostly we'll know that India has the largest acreage, and this is showing uh, what is the exact scenario. But if you see the global market, India's contribution is very minuscule. We really do not uh, uh, contribute much to the global market. So bamboo forest area in the northeastern region, 40%, and then 
northeast Arunachal Pradesh is the highest, that is, which I showed you in the graph also. Now my concentration is on bamboo shoots where I have been uh, working. So it, is, it has a long history for food and medicine in many countries. It has been, of course, in China, there's a lot of emphasis. So there is no banquet without food, in, uh, without bamboo. In Japan, king of the forest. In Korea, in Korea, they say the garden without bamboo is like a day without sunshine. Such, so much important. In, and in Manipur, it used to be, in Manipur, a household without bamboo was considered un unauspicious. But sadly, now we don't hardly see it, any bamboo growing in, in the houses except for the rural areas. So such is the importance in, in, in our culture. And so from poor men's timber, it has, we, we just designed the, a rich man's delicacy because uh, first of, in India also, we have a bias. When we look, we look down upon bamboo, we say that, oh, it is for poor people. That's what we usually say. And uh, even in Punjab, there is a very negative thing. That's what they say. But when uh, Punjabis, they are very, um, they, they, they are very easy going. When they go to the markets uh, and, and five-star hotels, they don't know that what they are despising, they may be also eating, paying exorbitant price. And so, uh, but it has to, it is uh, slowly, we need to tell the importance if you want the shoots to be eaten. So this is how it is sold in the Northeast. That is one big problem. The, uh, I think a person who wants to try bamboo shoot, if it, is so, uh, if it is sold like this on the streets, he will have two thoughts. Should I go for that? That's, this is one thing. So consumed by the vegetable, but it is looked down as a raw and but it is uh, uh, eaten at a high price in in hotels and restaurants, so we don't know. But, so we could, it is utilized, but not from India, like it is mostly from being imported. And for those who are new, the shoes have a very crunchy taste, and then it is used in different, preparing different cur curry salads and pickle, it is used in the extender, but what we need is to be, it should be processed and preserved in many forms. It has a very short shelf life, and maybe two, three days, and it is available only for three, four months. And this is how we proceed. We remove the culms, the peel shoots, and then we process them in different forms, boiled shoots, soak shoots, or fermented shoots. Fermented shoots, they have a very pungent uh, smell, so it may not, not be palatable to all. And these are also how we analyze. We oven dry them, we sun dry them, freeze dry them. And so we analyze the, uh, the fresh ones, we analyze the processed forms, and then after making the products, then we analyze, because we have to be, we have to be really sure that what was there, the phytochemicals or the nutrients which were there, it is transferred, it is maintained till the end so that the consumer gets a, gets a very good product which, is, which has high nutrient content and also phytochemicals. So uh, I will not talk much about this because I think uh, already it has been uh, talked about by another speaker. So we have uh, a, oh, so, okay. So uh, the rich nutrient content, high content of minerals and fiber and low in fat and sugar. And this is just we mentioned. So it is endowed with the following properties. It is rich in nutrients, bioactive compounds, which are the health beneficial compounds, appetizer. It is organic, especially in the Northeast, because uh, we, it is just naturally growing in the forest. And you don't, in those which grow there, they are not, you don't use a fertilizer. So it is low fat content. And most important, it is, has a high dietary fiber. Nutrients, I, I will um, not, So just a comparison, whatever we are eating, cabbage, carrots, spinach, and protein, this is our from analysis. If you compare that, it has proteins uh, uh, higher than all these fiber is also minerals. So all bioactive compounds, the phenols and phytosterols, bamboo shoots is superior compared to all the normal vegetables we, which, we are, which we are consuming at present. 
and the therapeutic potential. It is written in all uh, medicinal books, but now it has been scientifically proved. Now we require scientific evidence that if you are saying this is good, why, how is it good? What are the compounds responsible? So it is proved by different groups that it can prevent cardiovascular diseases, it, it is anti-cancerous, it is anti-diabetic, anti-microbial, anti-fatigue. So these are some of the scientifically authenticated uh, properties of, of bamboo. And uh, our, uh, the father of medicine, Hippocrates, he had, he had emphasized uh, that your, the food which you eat should be also good for health. And that, that was written quite long time back. And also we have many Chinese books and also in Indian also where it has been the, the, uh, to written the, signif the significant role of bamboo in the traditional medicine, um, Asian medicine. Bamboo shoots and human health, these are scientific papers antioxidants, they are antimicrobial, that is why uh, they are good for fabrics because they, they have the activities, they can prevent the antimicrobes, then uh, anti-cancer, cholesterol lowering properties, anti-fatigue, anti-diabetes, so these are all, uh, the clinical trials have been done on animals and also some of them are even human trials, so gradually it is being proved and in the Ayurveda, in the uh, traditional Indian system also, uh, it, it, is, it has been an ingredient of many applications, uh, Tavashir, uh, Bans ba Lotion, that is used even in the Chavan Pras which we consumed, but people don't know about it. Chavan Pras, that is, uh, it comes from the name of a sage, Chavan, and he used the Tavashir to prepare his tonic and it is said that he regained, he was youthful and he was quite healthy and he was of the view that uh, the uh, tabashi it will reju rejuvenate all the tissues in the body and it and it keeps it keeps the fire going on inside a body that is our metabolic process is very strong these are some of the different we uh, one of my students she has analyzed all the edible bamboo species of Manipur and Philostich ismenai, this is uh, Bambusa mizoramia, dendrochalamus, membranous Philostich ismenai, it's not from Manipur, it is from Shillong. Then the different forms of bamboo shoots, we, uh, we, have, we can just recognize uh, the bamboo when we see the shoots, Sikimensis, Newtons, Balkoa, I don't have the picture of Latiflorus, which is quite, uh, quite important in this region. So these are how they are sold in the markets in different, so in Nagaland, in, uh, in, in Shillong, in Manipur, they are in different forms. I have already, and these are uh, some, of, oh, I'm sorry. So some of the analysis, mineral analysis, we do it by WXRA, fluorescent spectra, we find out what are the minerals. This is a very analytical technique where all the minerals are, we can, uh, are found in, in one sample. It takes a lot of time to prepare this sample, but this is an accurate one. First, we used to do it by an, another, another standard protocols. Then these are the fibers which, uh, which has been extracted from and refined even in Germany, look, uh, Germany is, Europe is not a, really a bamboo growing uh, country, but realizing the importance, they, uh, they have uh, extracted bamboo fibers and are using it for medicine as well as food. And so it is a flavorless and tasteless a fibrous powder and you really do not know, know whether it is added at uh, last uh, yesterday we made, just you added the bamboo shoot and you made cookies, so you really do not know it. You just have to know how to use it. Then, why do we, we want to fortify shoots? Why do we want to, you may ask the question, why do we want to fortify food? First of all, uh, there is unawareness that it is edible and then it is seasonal. We don't get it every time. Somebody comes to me on Nimla, I want to prepare a bamboo shoot, where to get it? Uh, and then, Sometimes it is not palatable. People don't like notice people, they will eat any bamboo shoot, whether it is fermented. But we wanted that the uh, nutrients and the, and the biotic compounds, which are bamboo, is transferred to food, so that it can uh, transferred into food products, so that then they can be easily available on the shelves 
even children can eat it or, or it, uh, adults can eat it. So we thought, we selected from 25 species we started, we have selected five, which are quite, uh, when we make products, they are able to retain the nutrients and the, uh, the bioactive compounds. And we call them, we call such uh, value-added food products as functional food, and also if it has had as a medicinal value, it is nutraceutical. So nutraceuticals have the bioactive compounds, nutrition, functional food have a more emphasis on the nutrients. So this is how we started, and, and there are food products now. How do we use it? We use it with, uh, oh my. We use uh, the shoot powder or we can use the shoot paste. Shoot powder, uh, there is a lot of, there is a little bit of d uh, difficulty in the, sometimes the acceptability because we have to, uh, when we make a product, we have to make sure that the consumers are going to accept it. So we have, uh, we have to try out many parameters. So these are the products, bakery products, dairy products, meat aquatic products, health beverages, miscellaneous in which bamboo shoots are being used. Then the products, you have pork nuggets, this is a uh, group working in Assam, then cookies, our own, then chips, pork pickles, so, but not, uh, they have not come out in the market as yet. We have to try much more harder to bring these products out in the market. And these are some of, you have muffins, you can make noodles, and all these are, they, they, the neutral analysis is already done. The, you can, this is a bamboo ice cream in Korea, in Damyang, it was very interesting. They had put bamboo leaves in, in the ice cream. And the medicinal use, this is also written in Bhavaprakas Nigantu, that is a very old uh, book from, uh, from India, uh, emphasizing the importance of uh, bamboo. And why are bamboo shoots uh, health promoting? Because they have phytochemicals like dietary fibers, phytosterols, and phenols. They, uh, <coughs> prevent many type of diseases, and the pharmaceutical company and the food uh, industries in drugs, nutraceutical, functional food, and as food additives. So bioactive compounds, they are secondary metabolites. They are not uh, really for nutrition, but they occur in small quantities which will provide health benefits beyond the basic nutritional value. So it is not for nutrition, but it is for health, bioactive compounds. And the phenols, they are very important because they are antioxidants, so phenols, what are they? They are benzene rings with an OH group, and these are the phenols uh, with, uh, species where we have analyzed the phenol content. And the antioxidant property is of interest for both nutrition and uh, medicine, uh, because we'll see why the pharmaceutical companies need the antioxidants. And now, because you are not able to get the natural, they are going for synthetic uh, uh, antioxidants. Which is, uh, which is not, which has side effects and which is not really. Everybody wants uh, a natural product. So phenols, they are antioxidants, they are antimicrobial, and they have also cardioprotective uh, properties. The antioxidants, they scavenge the free radicals. The free radicals are always damaging the cells, and that is why the cells age. And so, so when you, you're try, you, you are told to eat colored, fruits and that, uh, those are the antioxidants. Uh, in the food industry, uh, the, they prolong, antioxidants prolong the shelf life. In the pharmaceutical products, they enhance the stability of the therapeutic agents. Now natural antioxidants, there is a search to replace, because in the pharmaceutical industry they are all using synthetic, so it is not uh, very good for health. And even uh, uh, the, when you Potato chips, when you, fry, when you fry the potatoes, there is a compound coming out, acrylamide, which is a carcinogen. And, it and so what is happening, they are trying to add products so that the acrylamide is not formed in, in the potato chips or the French fries. So this is an a very dangerous health issue. We like chips, we, we like the French fries, but there is ac acrylamide which one has to be cautious about. The phytosterols, so they are a fraction of the lipids and it inhibits the cholesterol absorption. So 
uh, especially the fermented shoots have a high phytosterol content and they are indicated to have anti-cancer properties. Pharmaceutically, they are, used, uh, they are important steroid products, corticosteroids, sex hormones, and oral contraceptives. They are the phytosterols I use. So bamboo has a very high content. And when you ferment it, almost more than three times the amount increases. So if, you want, if you're working in a pharmaceutical company, you want to uh, get phytosterols, you go for the fermented shoots. So fresh, from fresh, so, and the dietary fiber, I think Professor Bish has already told about it. These are the uh, bamboo shoot extracts and leaf extracts. Now this, when you cut a bamboo, you see inside, this, this is silica. This is uh, very pure uh, silica. That is why uh, earlier times, the, uh, when you cook rice or you cook uh, something in, inside bamboo shoots, uh, sorry, in the calms, you must have seen they cook rice. So there, all the minerals are being absorbed in the rice or in the vegetable. So, the, so that is a direct way of getting. So silica, as you know, it is very vital for the skin, uh, fingernails, hairs, and it is a, also as a common food additive. Uh, now, uh, equisetum, it is, a, it is a plant that is, which is used for extracting silica, but, but it, it has no comparison with bamboo. It has more than 50, 30 times the, that of the equisetum. So functional food, these are an emerging class of natural products where you don't know whether it is a food or a it is it is a mix of both you can have it so it is specially designed to enhance health the functional foods and you you already i think or most of you have eaten the functional food when you are eating something uh, from either a jam or a butter it is if you read there is omega-3 added and in jams they, something is added so that these are dietary supplements and nutraceuticals, they are present in a non-food matrix. It will be a capsule. So there is a difference between functional food and nutraceuticals. One will be a non-food, other is a, is, is a food which you can consume. So you have organic bamboo powder supplement. The bamboo capsules are there. It is available. If you can just look around, you can, you can find them. Then ultimate anti-aging super food. This is also available in the market. Bamboo salt. This is in Korea. They have different types of bamboo salts and uh, uh, it, is, um, it is just put inside the bamboo culm and then it is heated for, uh, at a high temperature so that the minerals are absorbed. So dietary fiber, for, they are used for slimming food supplements, weight loss. But these are all not from India. Selenium, this is a very important for thy thyroid uh, hormone metabolism and also it uh, protects from several, some diseases. Then, okay, bamboo shoots and human health. This is some of uh, uh, the experiments which has been carried out. Anti-tumor activity, these are, uh, there are patents on this, cholesterol lowering activity, antimicrobial peptide and antibacterial. So all these have been proved, but if you see there are no really, in, if I see from Manipur there is uh, this, there is, they are not, we should, look, I have always emphasized we should work on our natural resources. We are trying, we are working on Dendrocalamus hamiltoni and we have, uh, we are working with, so this, uh, on anti-cancer effects, this is done in Japan, Philostachys pubescens, and uh, they were able to uh, decrease the uh, malignant uh, uh, sarcoma cell number. The tumor was suppressed. And cholesterol lowering activity, this is human trial. Uh, this, uh, he is uh, Professor John from Korea, and we talked to him, and I, met, we, I met him in the last um, World Bamboo Congress in Korea, and they, they selected eight subject, uh, uh, women, and after three, four, uh, six weeks, I think, they, they found that the cholesterol level is lowered. Then anti-diabetic properties, sasa buralis. We have to find our own uh, Indian uh, bamboos we can, who can have. And in the last uh, line, you can see that in ha when the hamburger pat meat was substituted or a sasa leaf extracts were added. 
there was significant reduction in the plasma glucose. So, yeah, there is now a lot of emphasis on anti -diabet on, on diabetics. Anti-obesity, you can get slimmer. I know some people, when I, uh, after my lecture, some people told me, ma'am, can I, can I get uh, weight loss after two weeks? I said, oh, you'll have to think about that. But it, it is not an overnight process, but it does. The, does. We have our own experimental results from dendrocalamus hamiltoni. So as a nutraceutical, you can get different products in the market if you search the Google. And then there are also, these are the bamboo-based nutraceutical products with their health benefits. These are our, our studies, in vivo antioxidant studies, which we conducted of BAL bill mice. This is in done with collaboration with the biophysics department who work because we, we need a person, because it is con concerned to our health. We need an expertise, so he is a, he is, is a doctor and he works on, on this. So we have a collaborative project where we work on these issues. We first analyze the shoots and then we feed them in different forms, in different process form. We start with six different parameters and we try to find out which one is, which one is the best. So we, uh, this is uh, the result from uh, using dendrocalamus hamiltoni. Initial body weight after six weeks, you could see a slight decrease in where the, the control. We used fresh shoots, fermented shoots, brine treated shoots, and boiled shoots. And our own obs observations, we, what I emphasized in the beginning, fermented shoots are very good. If you see in the six week, there is a slight decrease in, in the body weight when the fermented shoots are consumed. So we have to find a way of how to, we are finding out a way how we can decrease the pungent smell of the, uh, of the fermented shoots so that it can be easily consumed by first time those who are starting shoots for the consumption of shoes for the first time. And then the lipid profile also. You can see in the first group, th there are, there's a control group uh, and uh, mice fed on fresh shoots, fermented shoots, brine, the same parameters are there. The lipid profile, if you see the LDH, which is considered the bad cholesterol, from 21 it has decreased to 8, 8 and then triglycerides also, 2 to 8 to 119. So this is a direct indication that really what was written in our mid old ancient books, it is really true. And this is what we need because we have to authenticate uh, and we have to find the species. We have started work on only one. We are uh, trying to work also on two other species. So we really, uh, if we repeat then, we can be really sure. So we are taking. So now why, why is bamboo shoot a neglected food item? First of all, the, I told, I talked about biasness. You just feel that, oh, this is not, uh, uh, this is a food for the lower people. So lack of awareness, people don't know. Even in Punjab, nobody knows that uh, bamboo shoot is very few people know. Then non-availability. When you want to uh, buy the shoots, you, are, you don't get it. Uh, you only go for the canned shoots. Lack of proper packaging, especially for the Northeast. And lack of processing and marketing. Lack of proper packaging. I told you in the beginning that these are how they are sold in the markets in the Northeast, fresh and processed. This does not have a very good picture. We would like to have something different. So a facelift is needed. If you, if you take it out, if you process it and put it in clean bottles or packages properly, one should, and it is put in the departmental store, I'm sure that the person who thinks that, should I eat, he will really go for that because you need a proper uh, packaging. Oh, this is uh, how, uh, so different South Korea, they are doing it very meticulously and in North India, uh, Northeast India, we are still following the age old processes. Which does, not, which does not seem very healthy, uh, like it, it not hygienic to a first time buyer. And that is why in, in our own Northeast where, uh, where it is full of bamboos, we find these cans coming in from Bhutan and Thailand. We don't have a product. I remember that when I was a child, we, we used to have some, a processing unit uh, in Manipur 
but that also has uh, closed. So it is time we try to see how we can uh, start it again. So what is the steps? What steps can be taken for popularization? So from the traditional, we always, uh, we have to mix the traditional knowledge along with the modern, modern techniques. So traditional way, which may be, uh, it is, there has to be a change, a modern ways to, in order to suit the palate of all, and then new food prepared products should be introduced where they can easily go in the market and buy it and just eat it. In so, and shoots in the form of powder and paste can be added as an additive in preparation of various uh, food items. Then uh, the con we, because of our uh, modern lifestyle, which is very big, then there is urbanization. There is a, sim a very significant impact on nutritional status. I, I feel that most of you, when you get up in the morning and if your office is uh, very far, you just grab something and you run away. That is what is civil. Modernization is also putting a lot of stress on us. So we don't have time to focus on the food. In the lunchtime, you go to the canteen, you eat something which we don't know what you're eating. That is having an impact. And uh, bamboo, it is a very good source of food and medicine. I'm not saying that this is, a, this, is, uh, this is a medicine for every purpose, but we can use it as a source. And if you consume uh, uh, regularly, it can be helping in a number of diseases, but we have to just select the proper species and then, and then um, work out strategies how to develop the functional foods and nutraceuticals. And Northeast India, it has a lot of strategies. We can come out with the technology, but because we are researchers, we need somebody to take it, uh, take it further. And uh, we try to um, w work out our species and find the best product, best species and to develop the product. So all the research is funded by Ministry of Food Processing. It takes a lot of money to do this because the instruments are there and the the day-to-day uh, -day requirement of chemicals, they're very expensive. So Department of Biotechnology, Ministry of Food Processing Industries have been, uh, been supporting our research and uh, we are also grateful to Ned Jacquet Foundation and American Bamboo Society uh, of which Suzanne is uh, one of the members. They have been, especially the animal part, the animal uh, part is being done through the help pr provided by both these um, organizations. Mm. Okay, and this is my team. I could have been nothing without my research scholars. They all have been working. So today she's going to share with us uh, a type, the topic is growing bamboo along creeks and rivers. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi. I will not show any bamboo shoot in my slides. But look at me. Can you see some bamboo shoot? Where? 
Wow! Remember the It's my Uh, why it's a continuing legacy. But before that, I'd like to thank Michelle, Susan, the people of uh, Manipur, the government of Manipur, and now my dear friend, Nirmala. <laughs> we planned this last year. She, she surprised me. Uh, she said that, Bing, you can go to uh, India. I did not realize that uh, it's really nice when your dream will come true. So I'd like to uh, uh, invite you. My dad is the one who shaped me to be in love with bamboo. It is my dad's legacy. And my dad is already in heaven or wherever. <laughs> And I believe um, he is, is standing before you because all this knowledge, all these things that I am going to talk to you today are all from his mind, heart, body, and soul. So all the food for the heart, mind, body, and soul, I also ate it from my father. So I place this title, A Continuing Legacy, because... I am not a forester. <laughs> I am not a, uh, uh, an expert in bamboo. <laughs> That's what they told me. But I studied bambology since my childhood because, uh, oh well, I'm, I will go through to the outline of my paper, overview of the paper, why bamboo, why erosion control, the experiences we gathered, and why we have to conduct science-based solution, what to do next, and some food for thought. So that's it. My father's name is Joe Kaasi, Merdonio Kaasi. That's where I derive my name, Merdonio. He is the bamboo king of Davao because he was the first one, the pioneer who, stab, a pion, a pioneer who established bamboo study. He um, um, found out the new species of bamboo that we have, as it is an endemic bamboo in the Philippines, Bambusa Filipinensis. And together with his family, and one of, uh, I am the daughter, and four of us are the children, they brought us, my mom and dad brought us to the field, and they showed us how to plant bamboo. And uh, we established different, many plantations in Davao, that's in the south part of Manila. I will show you later. And then uh, when I went to college and I finished, uh, because an, I am an entomologist, my husband is a taxonomist. We are the pioneers in the study of uh, arthropod pests associated with bamboo. But still, my dad, when I was younger, um, they, and my mom, who really is a very good cook, um, they, to they taught us how to eat bamboo shoot. And so... Uh, when I was um, studying, I cannot find any research at all. So when I went, ba when I went back for my uh, PhD, I started research on bamboo shoot. And that's how uh, it was very good. One of those uh, funding uh, agencies gave me a little bit of money to start the survey of bamboo shoot and the status of the bamboo shoot industry in the Philippines in 1998. And then I... Uh, so World Bamboo, I attended the World Bamboo uh, Congress in uh, Korea, and then I had an opportunity to meet uh, Mauricio. We went to Puebla, it was really very good, and the last World Bamboo Congress in uh, Mexico last year. And why bamboo planting along the river and, the ri uh, and creek? In our first uh, farm, the farm that we used to plant when I was still younger, we plant our bamboo near the river. I will show you later. And then uh, in the recent uh, years, I'm so concerned about flooding, landslide, and all this environmental destruction. And so when I went to Nirmala, 
she was the one who told me, yes, you can talk about rivers and uh, because th that's your experience. So experience can also be a very good story. So this story today is all about planting um, bamboo in the river. That's what we did when we, I was younger. And then when I returned from my PhD, I convinced the administration that I have to plant bamboo along the creeks, aside from establishing a bamboo, plant, a bamboo uh, IPB, the IPB or the uh, university bamboo plantation uh, inside the campus. And this is the same slide that I uh, showed the, uh, last year in Mexico. And same way, this World Bamboo Con uh, Workshop is a very great venue and opportune time to understand. I know for the past five days, yeah, we've been rich with understanding the importance of bamboo, and especially in our environment. And environment includes people and places in this time of changing uh, climate. And so, that's it. Growing along, bamboo along uh, creeks and rivers are very good sources of edible shoots in the Philippines. And uh, the natural bamboo sands were very abundant in the past. But now, if you don't have bamboo anymore, you don't have bamboo shoots in your area, in my country. And the fast uh, human population growth, expanding agriculture and rapid urbanization, especially in major cities and municipalities, creeks and rivers became vulnerable. I think I'm very sad that Manipur is getting this problem. And I'm just so very, very sad seeing the countryside with all the mountains already brown. I thought when I will land in Manipur, it will be green <laughs> because that's what they describe it to me. But anyway, that would be a challenge. And so it limits the supply of bamboo shoot and bamboo because of this serious consequence of soil erosion in the mountain, not just, like, not just in the mountains, but also in the foothills of our mountains. And so the objective, was, the objective of this, yeah, now, now I understand. Now I understand. Oh, whoa, whoa, oh. Uh, Mr. Chair, please minus that for my time. <laughs> So, the, uh, the objective of my paper is to tell you a story, a very, very good story, bamboo story, our experiences in Davao, that's in the south, and Laguna, that's where I uh, live, and how creeks are very good sources of vegetable shoots, and then uh, why it's really better for erosion control and river rehabilitation. Uh, I also planted several species of bamboo because I wanted to see whether they can grow very well in the creek as well as uh, the importance of mixed planting of uh, different um, small trees or small shrub, a suitable small dicot species to help stabilize creeks and uh, river banks. So these are significant findings generated after several years of observations. And uh, I will focus more on the growing of bamboo on the creeks and rivers. Uh, you, can, uh, I can, you can Google my, um, my, our paper about uh, bamboo shoot, and so that I will have more time to talk about um, bamboo in the creeks. So the Philippines is an archi archipelagic country in Southeast Asia with seven, oh, when I was young, there was 7,210 islands. Now it's 7,641 islands, 300,000 square kilometers, and the Filipino population today is, or oh, last year, is 107 million. So uh, this is where we lived in Davao, and that's the south southernmost portion. And this is where I, oh no, I am pointing at the wrong, <laughs> I should point this way. <laughs> so this is where I lived. So this is where we have our uh, farms when I was growing up. And this is where I live now. That's the university where I am uh, uh, working. And that's the Laguna when uh, I will mention in uh, my next slide. I think this is new, but it's not performing very well. Uh, just some of the uh, food from bamboo shoot. Uh, I was supposed to cook 
spring rolls and the spring rolls should look like this yesterday but I forgot to put wrapper in my uh, menu so they were not able to uh, buy the wrapper because it's not listed in the menu so when you are very creative you can have spring rolls and I called it yesterday the naked spring roll it's the same without the wrapper but you see the students I am I have with yesterday they oh no it was Zimena thank you very much Zimena told me no 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 just get numb numb and then you can wrap the ingredients of the spring roll and there you go thank you man Jimena yesterday you were really very very creative and this is what I like because I can get all the uh, nutrition medicinal and Ayurvedic property of bamboo when I cook uh, the meal in this way so every time I go home in my hometown I ask our helpers to please uh, cook me this because I can be uh, healthy and what did you say, Nirmala? Healthy and beautiful and uh, so okay. Uh, now I get the secret. Don't push it too hard. Just very, very lightly. <laughs> See, experience. That's why I have to use experience. Is experience is the best teacher, <laughs> and experience taught me to be strong. Uh, experience taught me to fight <laughs> and so uh, I think this is a very good venue now that I have to tell you that I am now stronger I can now be a good fighter and I can just tell you all the stories that I know based from my experience so this is where the uh, the farm that we used to uh, uh, play live eat when I was younger so it's beside the river so look at, look, it's a very, very beautiful, yeah, it's a very, very, very beautiful uh, mountain. But you see, it, all these are coconut plants, and these are the bamboo that the family planted. This is the famous Iho River, and we started planting in 1970. And this farm is already 45 years old. Uh, that's where we get a lot of bamboo shoot when we were younger. And... Uh, it is uh, along Iho River, but the sad thing is that Iho River is from Compostela Valley, where you get all the major mining sites residues. So the very, very big company, North Davao Mining, all their waste will come here. I'll tell you later what will be the disadvantage if you harvest bamboo shoot from this uh, portion of the river. I just like to comp I I would just like to compare the farm which is opposite our farm you see the erosion but if we compare that in our farm you see how it stabilizes the soil and so I th I thought wow daddy dad <laughs> I have to tell this story so that other people will know and this is a, a total destruction if you don't have bamboo and other trees in your farm though this that is our farm and that is a nearby I I just wish that I can be millionaire so I can buy all the rivers and the creeks <laughs> so that I will plant them with bamboo because that is the last wish my father told me you plant all the major rivers in the Philippines oh I cannot do that <laughs> And I was so fascinated when I was growing because this is what I always see. And when I went to college, I know that bamboo is a monoculture. Yes, when you grow them along the creek, they are not shallow rooted. They elongate. So, what are the lessons we learn in the vow? That planting these two species of bamboo, Bambusa filipinensis and Gigantocloa utter, control soil erosion along the Iho River. And initially, uh, Dad 
uh, thought that ipil ipil, lucina leucocephala, as a source of nitrogen, can be planted before planting bamboo because that can be a source of a natural source of nitrogen. And then uh, initially observed are that, yeah, I think it, it was the one that I show you. This is a very, very good site. I only appreciated this very much when I was already uh, trying to uh, study what happened to these uh, monocot roots. But there is a problem because uh, five families, my dad is so generous that uh, his lawyer workers, he lets them uh, stay in our farm. And so one of the problems for soil erosion is that if you have five families with 50 children, after 20 years you will have, from the five families, it went to 100 families uh, with uh, 16 children now, we uh, celebrated our Christmas and we had statistics. The children are already 200. And so they are the cause of soil erosion in that farm. So it is a bit a uh, challenge to us on how are we going to teach the community uh, to prevent soil erosion in that portion of uh, the farm that my dad donated for them. See, the carabao is really happy inside the bamboo farm. This is the uh, two species uh, that we planted. Laak is a very, very good, uh, I'm promoting endemic species. In my paper uh, last year in Mexico, I am promoting endemic species because that's, where, that's our own uh, variety of uh, bamboo in my country. And it's called Bambusa filipinensis. And I, every time I lecture, we will not put any common name except Laak. And the other uh, endemic species is Bambusa meriliana, and the common name is Bayog. So it very, we are very, very fortunate that we have two endemic species, Laak and Bayog. And this one, uh, Gigantuklo water, uh, it's native in Southeast Asia. Uh, these are the families I said that uh, they cause soil erosion also, one of our problem in the farm. And then, in 1994, Dad was uh, invited to uh, propagate bamboo uh, and uh, rehabilitate river. And uh, we call this Sagip Ilog, Saving Creeks and Rivers. And the title of the program is Kawayan Yama ng Laguna by the Governor Jose Lina. In English, it's called Bamboo Laguna's Treasure. Th there, there is Dad uh, in the orientate. My dad has a uh, big tummy, beer's belly, they call it, and he's doing this orientation uh, in all uh, the towns of uh, uh, Laguna. And uh, at least uh, he, we propagated 300,000 planting materials and planted this uh, bamboo in at least 20 towns in different terrains, including creeks and rivers. And that's when uh, the time when I went back from my PhD, I helped dad in this program. Uh, it's just very sad because after the project, the province did not continue the program. But when I went back, uh, the oldest species that were growing there are still, are still there. Now, uh, it is a con uh, it, the Laguna experience after Dad's Davao experience and then Laguna's experience, I cannot help but I need to, uh, from my heart, I needed to find for a creek for me to plant bamboo. So I was very fortunate in my office. Uh, I was able to uh, ask the permission of the administration to plant bamboo so that I can continue with my uh, bamboo shoot research and determine which is bamboo species are suitable to grow along IPB Creek. I call it IPB Creek because my uh, uh, workplace is called Institute of Plant Breeding. So now it's, it will be called IPB Creek. But there is a problem. They said that bamboo are shallow rooted, so it's not appropriate for the river, uh, for the creek, because it's monocot. Mm, okay, all right, just let me uh, plant. And then they said that it's a place where thieves hide. So cut all the bamboos because it's just a place for uh, thieves. And then bamboo can easily lodge, especially strong uh, 
flash floods because we have at least 15 to 20 storms coming every year. But when I went back to uh, literature, there, there were only few research on uh, using bamboo for uh, rivers and creek rehabilitation. And so this is a challenge to uh, our foresters and all those uh, interested to work on uh, bamboo along creeks and rivers. Uh, I think this is a very, very good um, research topic in the future. Hello. So this is our, uh, this is my, uh, this is my office, and there is this uh, small bridge here. This is where I start planting bamboo. So this is my experimental area. This is our administration building, and this is the creek. The one that I will highlight to you are those ones that had been planted over here. Okay, that's the aerial view of the office. And this is now the, this is now the bamboos that were growing along the creeks when we planted them in 1999. Unfortunately, 2006, there was this super typhoon, uh, uh, and we call it Milenio. The international name for this uh, uh, typhoon is Zhang Zame, and um, that Laguna part in our university, it is the eye of the storm. And so we were devastated. But you know what I found out? These, bam these bamboos, they did not fell. Or did, they did not fall. They were the only ones remaining standing. And so 2006, wow, I'm so impressed. So, so I have this, I have to continue this research. I have to continue this research. And so what happened now is that in 2010, they're still standing, but look at what happened. And I'm getting excited because it can accumulate the soil in the river, uh, in the, at the banks. And this is what happened, especially with this uh, variety. This variety came from Thailand. Anyone from Thailand? Oh, okay. So, oh, I love this variety so much. They call it Thirsustachis siamensis. They said that that was the um, species that were grown in the mountains, uh, in the mountains of uh, Vietnam, in the mountains of Vietnam, and then they were all gone because of this U.S. bombing. So I was able to go to Vietnam and look for this species, but they're all gone. But this is the great discovery. This is a very good species. So I hope uh, Manipur, even if this is uh, exotic, maybe uh, you quarantine it. It's very good for the river uh, because they are very prolific if they have water at their sides. Oh, wait. Yeah, okay. This is... Uh, oh, yeah, okay. In the Philippines, we call it pole bamboo. When it was introduced as an ornamental species, we have a name, a common name, pole bamboo. But in the literature, it's called monastery bamboo. Thirsustachis siamensis. And look at what happened. So it's getting exciting. When you compare this one with bamboo and without bamboo, where you only have moringa olifera and the acacia, look what happened. And look what's happened to this one. Are you happy? <laughs> it's a good experience. And look at all the other species of bamboo. And uh, you can see how it is so, uh, it, it, it has stabilized, how it can control soil erosion. And another, yeah, with this species, uh, now I am collaborating with a, with a root scientist so that uh, we can collaborate and we can explain this scientifically. And maybe in the next uh, five years or three years or two years, I will be able to tell you or uh, another story and now with numbers, with the data on how we can uh, show to the world that this species and all other species can be planted along creeks and rivers. Look at this number, the root length. If you plant them in the river, the root length in meters is 10.5. But if you put them in just plain, uh, limited water, the root is only 2.0.
That's very, interest that's very interesting. I just wanted to show you. This is the... Uh, I wish um, next time I can, uh, dug, I can dig deeper so that I can uh, uh, compare the kind of roots when you plant them in the river and the kinds of roots that you just pl uh, put it in the plain. Next time. And this is how it looks like if you put them in the river. They continuously grow. And so I defied the idea that they are shallow-rooted. They only become shallow-rooted when they don't have water. But if they are beside rivers, they can be longer and they lengthen. And you see, uh, this is uh, Bambusa vulgaris. This is one, uh, the one species that I uh, planted in 1999. And this is also uh, beside the river. Uh, yeah, this is also what happened. It's a, uh, uh, a close-up of the, of the roots when you plant them in the plain, but when you plant them in the creek, they grow profusely. So, the test of time. How many flooding do we have in this creek if we have an average of 15 to 20 typhoons in a year? So, still standing after, after, after super typhoon, protected protected the creek from eroding. So 1999 to 2019, how many years? Almost 20 years. And I don't know the, the, the technical term, but I just invented matting. There is root matting underneath. Matting, because the roots already matted. They weave each other and they interact with the soil, the sediments, the microflora, and everything. And even the roots of all the other plants that were growing underneath it. Isn't that amazing? Yee! <laughs> so, these are also some of those uh, speci species that I've planted. Uh, that's your pole bamboo or uh, monastery bamboo. This is your green uh, buho or stachyum. I really don't know the species of this one and the Taiwan bamboo. Uh, that's supposed to be <laughs> uh, Bambusa dolicomeritalia. I made a mistake. This is uh, an insect. <laughs> I interchange insects now and bamboo. <laughs> so the challenge, the challenge. So uh, one of the uh, deputy director told me that get rid of the bamboo in the, re in the creek because uh, they are shallow rooted, they can easily lodge, and uh, they are places for thieves. But I have to go to the Department of Environmental and Natural Re uh, Resources because you just cannot cut your bamboo in the river, in, in the creek. Uh, all, there is a very, very sad story because in one of those administrations, <clears throat> the tissue cultured bamboo that Dr. Alfineta Zamora planted along the creek were all cut. Uh, they were very powerful because if you're in the administration, if you don't uh, like that, they will cut. And so I, was, I disappeared. I was so sad in 2003 because they cut all the, re the, 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 the bamboo along those creeks. Okay, so that was uh, 19... But I said to them, okay, they can cut all the bamboo that I planted, but they can never, never cut my love for bamboo. So I stood. That's why now I am stronger. I, I need to fight for what I believe in. And see, because of that, all this uh, came to fruition. You just have to be very, very brave. You just have to fight what you believe in. And so another challenge. So you think again. Oh, how can you prevent bamboo from lodging because they are top heavy? And so, okay, okay, okay. This Ipil Ipil, this Lucina leucocephala, this horse, horseradish, a very, very important uh, uh, nutritious leafy vegetable, Moringa olifera. This one, without leaves. How many minutes more? Minus the technical <laughs> five. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, okay, so um, we, I planted them, and it's really very good along the bend. Because if you have, it's just, it's just like 
embracing. If you embrace, it's like uh, it becomes strong. So I planted the bamboo and then planted later the, no, I planted the, I planted all the seeds and then plant bamboo in between. So that, you know what? With monocot, they said it's spreading. But with daikot, they have a top root that goes deep, 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 deep. And so with your spreading roots of your bamboo and the deep uh, roots of your daikot, they can embrace together so that if you have very, very strong flood, they will just, mm, they will not lodge. And so that's another <laughs> nice experience that I uh, uh, discovered in this uh, creek. Anyway, <laughs> so when I started uh, planting and after, uh, after several years, I saw more fish, I saw native turtles, birds, everything, different kinds of plants uh, that makes you feel very happy because all the diversity will be coming back. And so this is what I have uh, experienced. All the species of bamboo, <laughs> including the ornamental species, can be planted along small creeks. They have shallow roots, but their roots will ramify and lengthen in the presence of water. Roots are leaving cement to hold the soil and other plants that can grow. And they can be stronger when planted with selected shrubs. I'll just show you uh, the portion of um, my work where I conduct a uh, lecture. And then after the lecture, we do the uh, cooking and eating in this uh, because I want to show to them what happened to the experiment that I did in the creek. <laughs> so, nutritious bamboo shoot. Nutritious bamboo shoot should also concern in taking care of environment. So next time when we plant bamboo for bamboo shoot, you have to consider the environment. Those mountains and plains growing along other herbs, shrubs, trees, even weeds, Basically, growing in an environment with diverse vegetation and diverse microorganisms because that's where you get all the nutrition. If you only plant bamboo, very limited nutrition, just like what Nirmala said. And some guide for ba better bamboo shoot, they have to be grown first along the river. Don't make plantation for bamboo shoot because you have two... Um, reasons you can produce bamboo shoot at the same time you can uh, prevent soil erosion and encouraging biodiversity there is a lady over there yesterday she's trying to emphasize biodiversity you we bamboo are not just the living organism in this we romanticize bamboo so much that we forget all the other life forms and so that's one uh, reminder do not over romanticize bamboo so much that you forget all the other living organisms. Avoid harvesting from the wild. If there is no um, other sources, well, you can have that for other, for the farmers. And harvest bamboo shoots from species that is not used for construction material and those that are growing locally. If you have your native, use your native because they had been here for centuries old and they had been acclimated by the soil and the climate. It makes sense. And so, in Mexico, I also said that it has to be, bamboo and bamboo should, should be an integral part of the people, just like in Manipur, very ideal as food source contributing to improve nutrition, better health, and anchored in a safe and better place to live in. Just like in the millennial goals for food security, poverty alleviation, environmental protection, and climate change mitigation. So I'd just like to summarize what I have said, highlight the importance of growing bamboo along creeks and rivers as valuable source of shoots. I encourage uh, planting bamboo along creeks and rivers to promote mixed vegetation, especially small shrubs and trees for soil erosion control. And I um, had a story about uh, case studies that provided significant insights on how we can revegetate our creeks and rivers. So let's continue the passion that dad planted in me 
end, I'd like to share it to you. And I hope I started planting that kind of passion in your heart, in your mind, in your bodies, and in your soul. So I'd like to continue this kind of research, calling all foresters who will help me and share. Let's share. We have to work together. Let's share. And calling all the researchers. I was talking to them yesterday, young and old, and funding agencies. Michelle, <laughs> maybe you can give me a little, <laughs> to conduct studies and generate science-based information. And we can use these initial results that we've been observing in the past 20 years. Because I am very, very much afraid that landslide, flooding, El Nino, La Nina, tsunami, deforestation is last born in my country. We only have this green, we only have this green in 1900 with 10.9 million population of Filipinos, 2018 with 107 million population, but you cannot have the green spots anymore. What are we going to do? Oh. I made... Can I extend three minutes? Uh, two minutes. <laughs> I scribbled this yesterday. I was so happy because... People don't realize that we need oxygen. And oxygen will be coming from our bamboo and the forest and the plants. And we are here. And sustainability, export or what? And when I asked my husband to interpret this, he made a haiku. It's a poem. And he said, Trees, bugs, animals, mountains, forests, and the seas, our lifeline, our lifeblood. We came here for history, culture, food, pharmaceuticals, handicraft, architecture, innovation, development, sustainability, environment. But the most important in breaking the challenges of bamboo for a better future are better people who can understand the basics of nature and who will not destroy the environment is that a good drawing so to one please help me you're a good improve this uh, uh, drawing <laughs> because the mountains and the seas are our lifeline and uh, let me just advertise my father because this is a living uh, uh, this is a continuing legacy in his writing, in 1990, this is uh, what he said. That's his writing when he was doing the draft. Mother Nature is now calling everyone, all creators, creatures of Earth, to ponder on the occurrences of calamities and the present phenomenon of El Nino and La Nina. And one of the many answers to this call is plant bamboo, just like what? And trees and all other plants for economy and ecology. This is my father in 2014. Uh, handsome, that's why I'm beautiful. Oh. <laughs> so the challenge now is people, it's the people. Let us protect our mountains. Let us protect our rivers. Let us protect our creeks. They are our life. This is my Volkswagen. It's going around the campus to tell people, let's plant bamboo. And I leave you this message from Khalil Gibran. It's very, very important. And it says, to you, the earth yields her fruit and you shall not want. If you but know how to feel your hands, it is in the exchange of the gifts of the earth that you shall find abundance and be satisfied. Yet, unless the exchange be in love and justice, it will lead some to greed and others to hunger. One more, my favorite line. 
Oh no. Oh no. Oh, well, anyway, I memorized this already. Only when the last fish been caught and the river been only when the last tree has died and the river been poisoned and the last fish been caught will we realize we cannot eat what we cannot eat money I enjoined everyone to please read the poem that I also made yesterday in unison. Can we recite the poem? One, two, ready, get set, go. Manipur. Oh, in unison. Uh, one, two, ready, get set, go. Manipur, dear Manipur. Hail, O oh dear Manipur, land of Jawal, the great Nehru has told, lying perfect in the northeast, laden in greens, laden in gold. Hail, O oh dear Manipur, magnificent mountains and valleys gold, rich in humanity, peoples and traditions, all have homes, all have food. Hail, O oh dear Manipur, today, where are your peoples heading? Your infall heated, your mountain stripped, the life on hold of breathing. Hail, O oh dear Manipur, there is hope, for there is bamboo for thee. Dear people, nature says, come back to me. Let us get together for a better place to be. Thank you. And it is still standing 
and I wanted to test, and I wanted to, why? Because I wanted to grow this. And if possible, I wanted to set up a bamboo stay home. So in this regard also, I wanted government to help me or some agencies to help me also. Thank you so much. Bamboo germination takes place based on the viability of the bamboo seeds. So far, I have been able to germinate bamboo even if I go from other countries also. But your preservation should be correct. And I have my team who can help you if you want. But bamboo from seeds is the most cheapest thing to do. It is the best way of getting bamboo propagated. And I am happy that you are collecting bamboo seeds. But you should also try to convert into uh, plantain making. So if you need any support, we can talk with I can help you, my people are there. And then also, it's the best way to uh, take a back. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm sorry. Do you questions? Yeah, there was two. that our bamboo campers on top, especially the bamboo which are grown here. But if you are making bamboo strips, you must be using only two species, either Dulla or Malpua. You may not be using other bamboo species, thin one. Now the best way what people are doing is nearness is to convert into fuel, into bricketing or into pellets. But for that you didn't work. So if you are, I don't know whether you are using this uh, strip for silent for either for making agrobatic steel or for making laminates. For laminates, fine, yes. excellent. But again, if you are taking a mature bamboo of four years old plus, or if you are taking tulda or balwa, you are getting only six feet. Yes, Even our plate, we are wasting it. But if you can combine with other units making steel and all, it can be a win-win situation. So if you are only making the four side plane, then it is the very best case. But as I said, right now we don't have any sharing of bamboo. Unlike China, I can go buy only lower portion and come. Here you are making an entire port. So wastage is bound to be high. The only thing either you can do is you can make into slivers for weaving or make into sticks. And in many parts you can uh, uh, you know, make it irrigating uh, particle. Yeah. Yes, uh, the gentleman you want. Yeah, uh, my name is Dhananda Nagarwal. I run the world's largest network of census We have made more than 400 films on all ordinary life, including my house. So I have a question for Kamishji. Uh, I was uh, searching around in this campus, around with different people who are into bamboo, who sell nursery seeds for bamboo. We have 425 acres of land, uh, just another state in Jharkhand, and we are interested to make a bamboo university there. And I have gained so much knowledge in this conference and so many nice people we have met. We want to invite all of them to teach there. And also everybody can go to the school and everybody can run. So I want your support in uh, getting seeds at subsidized rates of, of all kinds of varieties which you can, you can plant them there so that can be a role model for everybody to learn experience and so what is the best way to get these seeds at a very subsidized rate because we don't know any source which is cheap because everybody is charging 3-400 rupees per uh, seed, something like that. So we want to know what is the best way to get um, seeds in bulk quantity of all varieties of okay. Thank you so much. See, let's have a frank talk. No subsidize, let's work commercially. We are not a profitable, but we are turning business. Okay, but since it's something, we, we have a kind of network where right now bamboo is flowering in North Bengal, near Siliguri side, near Jalpaikri. And basically the big bamboo that is flowering, like the forest is flowering. So if it is viable, I can put you in touch with who is collecting, you can buy from them straight. But I don't think these people, common people who are collecting, will not go for a subsidized. 
But only thing I tell you frankly, in India people are selling seeds, but it is not certified. I tell the story in, in, in Switzerland. Nabad funded a project for bamboo plantation. They got the seeds from Dehradun, calling it Hamiltoni. After two years they come to know this sticker. So these are big, big blunders that have taken place. Even a bank like Nabad could not identify what seed it is. I have been always requesting the National Bank Commission for having a seed bank or seed certification. But that is not taking place because there is very poor network of who is collecting seeds or who is not collecting. So we can start the first seed bank in our land and we will, we will pay the price whatever is reasonable. Exactly. All the people are doing it and I can put in touch with them and you can talk to them one to one. Thank you. Uh, excuse me, over here. Towards left. Left, left, left. Here, here. here. <laughs> On the, okay. And you go first, and the next one will be the lady in front. Uh, thank you. Go ahead. Oh, I'm Welcome. reading to the Kingdom of Bhutan. And first of all, uh, let me explain my thanks to the World Bank Organization for making this happen as an annual event. Uh, our presence here is a true reflection of our, our interest in this event and it's great that we are here from across the globe. So I just wanted to know whether the World Bank Organization supports and inspires people uh, in towards the conservation, the scientific research uh, like population structure, uh, soil chemical properties, and conservation threats, threats of bamboo. So without different resources, there will be no uh, such activities. Thank you. And the question is to us, which uh, speaker? Uh, actually, to the world, yeah, the world organization. Uh, so, um, okay, I'll open the floor, and I'll, I believe that the question is towards uh, Ms. Susan Lucas. She will take a question. Yes, yes, ma'am. Uh, no, we're not a funding organization. In fact, we usually are asking for funds. We have no funds to give, I'm sorry. Um, but we support research through our networks and, and alliances. Um, but we, we support uh, research by coming to these events, publishing papers, presenting posters, being a speaker, and presenting your research. Um, and all of those papers, hundreds of papers, are available for free download from our website, worldbamboo.net. On the upper right hand, you'll see proceedings. They're free. You can go back all the way to 2009, when we were in Bangkok, then all the papers presented in Belgium, Korea, Mexico, and this event later will be available to all the PowerPoints. So we have a wealth of information, but we have no funding. I'm sorry. All right. Um, so we move on to the next question, the lady. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Wilson Ponsalan, World Bank Ambassador and Working Group the Convener of the International Organization for Standardization. I'm also involved with Working Group 2 for uh, Bamboo Flooring Terminology and for FIVE, which is Engineering Bamboo. Now, my first question, just two questions, very short ones, for Mr. Kamesh Salam. You highlighted the importance of social entrepreneurship because it is not sufficient to just provide machines and funding to different communities when they are not even familiar with the type of species that will be used for specific products. What is now needed for these communities not only to change in terms of mindset but to actually inculcate important values transformation. And then my second question for uh, Dr. Nirmala and Dr. Ramirdirin Kaasile. Given that you have a wealth of research on healthcare, on bamboo food and beverages even, is it possible to now have these researches patented? 
meaning what do I mean? We have to marry the research with practical uses. And in order for that, I would, I would just ask for both uh, the doctors, have you tried uh, contacting either the State Nutrition Council or the National Research Council so that the researches that you have made can now be uh, echoed down to public elementary schools or private schools in order to address the severe malnutrition program, uh, the severe malnutrition of children in public elementary schools. Because this is a problem that we have been encountering not only in India, but also in our, our countries in Southeast Asia, as, as well as those who are affected by calamities and are conflict. And I have seen this because I work in uh, disaster areas in the Philippines and other Southeast Asian countries. Uh, maybe Sir Kamesh can answer the first question. Uh, thank you for your question. It's a very uh, difficult question because, see, we, this part of India, Northeast, we don't have any medicine manufacturing. Medicine comes from a place where they don't have that. So there's a big gap. When you design a machine, they just design some simple machines, which are not bamboo users. The woodworking machines are now used as bamboo machines. So far, we have not been able to doctor our actual requirement. The IIT Mumbai, when we were in UNDP, we started some bamboo tools for artisans. It worked very well. But again, there was no continuation of those kind of tools. We give power tools where there's no power. Even the NGOs here, they are looking at the schemes which has the highest money. Without knowing that they have the infrastructure or they have the power connection. So this is something we need to take up very seriously. The machines what is being shown here is not applicable to anything other than the other with the six only. Right. So we need to look at other policy machines, handheld machines, other simple tools needs to be introduced. Then only the handicraft sector or the bamboo sector can develop. We are looking at the only for you know one one percent of the bamboo industry, but that needs to be thoroughly you know studied, and I recommend strongly that looking in the toolkits and you know, the tooling of the artisans or the uh, is a very big issue and it needs to be looked into very carefully. Not only that, the supply of the machines only finishes when once you give the machine, no spare parts comes. As I said earlier, our bamboo is monoplastic border, silica content is high, is very hard. You need you need carbonated beds and it is costly. So if one cutter breaks down, you have to wait for one month for the next cutter to come. There is no sales service here. So there are a lot of issues, but I don't want to explain everything here. But this is a very core issue that everyone needs to take it home. Like we need to look into the tooling of the artists. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, here. No, yeah. Uh, no not, not, not yet. Uh, we, there's a second question that has to be answered. The okay. second question, uh, Nirmala is there, so I will uh, answer first. Um, uh, I will correct it. In the Philippines, uh, nobody is doing any research on bamboo shoot. Uh, the papers that I published in 19, in 2000, um, 2010, those are the baseline information that you can find uh, in my country. Uh, the good thing is that uh, now I am going around the Philippines and recruiting uh, uh, researchers and young researchers to do a lot of research about not just bamboo shoot but all uh, things about bamboo. And so, uh, to repeat, there is a dearth of information, very, very limited, because we still don't have uh, this uh, wealth of of uh, researchers that you were uh, saying a while ago. So uh, I think it's also the same with Nirmala. Uh, I think Nirmala is there already, Professor Nirmala. Go, go ahead, Doctor. Please repeat the question. Please repeat the question for Dr. Nirmala. Is it all right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, given the research that you have done Is there a move to have 
these particular findings as this research to go into the CIA pilot program to address severe malnutrition, especially in um, primary school children who may, because we experience what well, I will just share in the Philippines, there are children, I, I am a third generation farmer, there are children who are not able to go to school because they are needed to work in the farm. And there are children in the cities who go to school without eating. That is the situation that I would like to address. So when it is it, in here in Manipur and in other parts of India, is there a move for either the State Nutrition Council or the Regional Council to address this malnutrition by providing healthy, nutritious bamboo shoot food? Thank you, Jose, for your question. Uh, yes, we are very interested in doing that, but our research is uh, still going on, and we are almost at we are at the product level. And uh, since it is uh, it, to be, it is to be consumed by humans, we have to be exactly very much sure that what we have found out scientifically uh, is uh, can be applied to humans. I think it can. Uh, so that is why we first analyze all the different uh, bamboo species. I told that we worked, started with 25. Now we have zero down to uh, five. Because first of all, we have to choose those uh, species which have very less sanogens, to, uh, that is one anti-nutrient. Not only sanogens, we have glucosinolates, we have, we have uh, tannins, and, uh, and other anti-nutrient sources. So to find out the best processing method, that is done. That is done, that is why we have. And then um, processing, how much we first analyze the fresh, and then after processing, how much nutrient is lost, how, how many phytochemicals are lost. Then we go to the product. To the product, we have all analyzed. Then the last step, we are on the last step where we are feeding into animals. And then we see what is the what is the changes when we say that it is health benefit. So I'm happy to inform you that we have reached that level. I showed you the table. It is there, uh, but we are just uh, try, try, going to try out some economic factors. Like if we take freeze dried or oven dried, it is going to be a bit expensive. So what would be the uh, most economical so that it can be applicable to all? So we have come with our products. And we, it is uh, my dream also that we shall have products in, uh, for at lower, cheaper price, which can be used by everyone. So maybe, let us say, two, three years. Good. Yeah. Uh, very one, one last question. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a chance. Yes. So, but we yeah. are running out of time. So yeah. last question. I'm, I'm a I'm a Mishama from Mango. My company is Hoi Marketing. I'm doing business since from 2010 in bamboo incense industries. Now, today I want to introduce myself that people are there in human touch. Dr. Melina, which has given the bamboo to grow. And Mr. Chu has given his traditions and his value how to make a new article design. And Dr. Nirmala has given how the medicines and future the bamboo can be used. So thank you. So my question is to Dr. Kameshi Salam. Day by day the things are changing. From North East to Assam, Chhattisgarh, many, many places the bamboo is growing. And we have realized that many bamboo industries are closing due to the non available of spare parts. When we are going to a Taiwan, people are going one to other. We should cooperate with them and we should learn from them what they are doing for training to get the missions. So, myself as a plan from 2010, I was there for China more than 10 to 20 times, almost from 5 to 6 years. I was there for 10 days each time. Now, I am producing bamboo sticks, I am producing toothpick, I am producing skewers. Now, my next plan was to make ice cream sticks. So this way, I heard that in Manipur we are available very good bamboos. But I never heard that these machines and these companies from today's rising, I will 
becomes unsatisfied, why we are closing it? In what way? Why, when we are buying a machine, we should be thoroughly for the spare parts. Why it's not available? It's generally, each and every part can be made in India it's also. Copy, as usual. But I want to know from Kamishi Salam sir, what happened to all these previous which are given the presentation the factory has closed, any drawback? What happened to them? Is it from private or from the government? Thank you. First of all, my name is Kamesh. Kamesh. Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. Mm -hmm. So, I am not doctor, I am just Kamesh Salam. Mm -hmm. See, the issue regarding the machine in all this has been there for the last 25 years. As I said, without knowing the strength and quality of bamboo, we buy the machines. We visit China. I have been there as many times as you have been there. We are working there in Mozo bamboo, silver grown bamboo, very soft bamboo. Here we are working with hard bamboo. The breakdowns are more. Right. But again, can you name five manufacturers in India who have been able to run their unit properly? They will only get patients when you demand it. They don't give any ready-made machines. Why? Because there is no demand. That's why we import machines from China or Taiwan. Taiwan, Qingyong is one of the oldest packing factories we established. And in China, there are many that are copied from Anji or any, any part, right? Their machines are, I can put as a photocopy of Taiwanese or Indian, but there is no one in Asian in India who is giving this spare parts. Um, yes. You agree? Yes, sir. But who will do I'm not from the government. Yes. When the agriculture ministry has farm ministry, a farm machinery office, but in, in Bamboo, it is not there. Bamboo is ruled by five different ministries, I tell you. Ministry of Textiles, Environment Forest, Ministry of Dialogue Welfare, then EIPP, and Agriculture Ministry. Five ministries are not the Bamboo. Up to this time, what are you So, who will find the answer? So, there are many issues. I am just telling the same story again for the last 15 years. Since from seven years, the same change is still there. So, you are not only one, but I, I, I appreciate your, you know, your, your, your urge to start many products is possible, but what I'm trying to say is to, to the value chain management. If you are giving bamboo strips to you, you can easily make it, you don't have to carry the full bamboo. Right? So, if, if people started making different bamboo parts, right now I'm exporting to the US. I'm exporting some bamboo components to the US. Right now, the bamboo, bamboo toothbrush man is after me. Supply me the bamboo for toothbrush. He imports from China, he said made in India. I don't want to challenge anyone, but I'm trying to because they said it's not available in India. If you see the bamboo tooth manufacturer, he said 250 farmers are benefited. It is in China, not in India. Right? But I want to tell them, if you said make in India, make in India. We used to like Geo, you bring the mobile phone in China and say make in India. Same is for bamboo. If you really have to make it make in India, then you have to tell the farmers, you produce the streets, I'll buy. I'm talking about simple things, bamboo man. Pale place in Manipur, near Mori, on this road. I used to collect bamboo mats and supply to Bangalore when I was in Manipur. Jiriba mat, but the, the distance, Assam is much more easier to manage. So we are a little drawback. So bamboo is bulky. But for your product, for toothpick or for other things, skewers. Squares, we can three in three inch dia, five inch dia behind the cutters. Right? But again, if you go to any mall, if you pick up any package, it is from Thailand or from China. None of the product we see Indian product here. Again, as I said, being bamboo hard or tensile strength, the problem is the cut cutter is the problem. So we have zero down to put. And I recommend Jati Bamboo, Bulu, the Tulda. Tula. It's the most versatile, it's the most versatile bamboo. Yes. IPC contacted me, come here. Get me uh, uh, bamboo sa barbatos from, from Vietnam. Because, a, because in that they are making agarbati. I said, no. Why don't you go for Tulla? Is that from Assam? Tulla is entered from, from, from Bihar, all the Gandhian trade, also the Northeast, you'll have Tulla. Strongest man on the world. Strong and very good person. Yes. For weaving, for sticks, for strips, you can do anything. This time I am testing two better bamboo now. Balpo and Tulla. Tulla is giving more better results. Yes. Much, much better result. So I recommend, like, my sales is that even if the farmers or man necessary bamboo machine to grow bamboo, let them go for Tulda, massive. They are users in their cell application. It is straight going, even the suits are good. For suits, the only drawback is that it's only four months a year. 
Even in bamboo, the challenge is that you can harvest only eight months a year, four months is rainy season. When I planned for that Numun Aliga refinery, bamboo bio refinery, I told them very clearly, don't think that you can run the factory 12 months. Four months is a very rainy season notice. You have to keep bamboo for 12 months, then only you can run the factory. So proper planning is required. But in machine factor, we have failed. Where do we have failed? There's a institute called TIPEC. It was run by, headed by, none other than our former president, Dr. Kalam. TIPEC started Bamboo Mission, uh, National Mission of Bamboo Application. Nothing happened. We have gone to the moon, but we cannot have this prepared with Bamboo technology. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry to say that word, but we still have the same answer, same question. Like where, where are we now in the Bamboo Mission? Right? So I think collectively we have to work. Thank you. Uh, I thank you for the question, and I also thank you, Kamisha, for the answer. Right. With that, I, 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 I realize that we already overshoot by seven minutes, uh, but it doesn't mean, and I understand you still have a lot of questions, but it doesn't mean that it ends here. Uh, we can adjourn and go for tea, and I encourage you to continue the question and discussion during tea break, okay? Thank you very much. With that, I close the session. May we request the speakers to kindly take tea on the left side of the stage and the delegates and participants on the right side of the stage. Thank you once again.